Hello. Good morning. All right. Question we have today. This one is from Marinda Hargrave of Nashville, Davidson, Tennessee. Have you ever started narrating a book and then realized, once you are into it, that it contains objectionable material? And if you have, what did you do? Is it okay to cancel a project or are you on the hook? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll say that for the most part, I'm, most authors, excuse me, most authors are really good about being up front with what their material is. Um, as far as it being like, uh, whether it's, it's got, uh, triggerable material in it, if it has, um, if it's like erotica or specific situations, most authors I found when I look at, um, descriptions of books on, on ACX are pretty good about that because it behooves them to make sure that they have a narrator that is going to um, be able to do the best job possible. And if someone's going to be really disturbed by the material, then disturbed and not supposed to be disturbed. Um, because sometimes yeah, you're supposed to, you know, you're writing something and you're supposed to feel disturbed. And that's kind of what we're, I mean, think about it, horror movies. There's a lot of horror, yeah, we say scared, but there's times where we watch that and we know we're going to be disturbed by the material, but we, that's kind of what we're looking for. We want that visceral experience. So, but yeah, I, I find that most are pretty good about, um, telling us what that is beforehand. Um, but have, uh, I need this. Um, have, uh, yes, I absolutely have had books that I have narrated where um, there has been surprise material in it that I was not expecting, that I did find objectionable. Um, it really depends as far as like, am I on the hook? What did I do? Okay, so one time I was, I was started to narrate a book and... Okay, so one of the one of the warning signs I should have seen was that there were typos in the audition that I did. Typos in the audition, and not just like one, like where it was obvious where, like an obvious typo in that, um, oh, my finger slipped and it spelled a different word and it's the correct spelling of this other word, or a word was left off. That happens. I'm not asking, I mean, I, I've written books, I've narrated a lot of books. I have found typos in every single book that I've ever narrated. It is virtually impossible to get them all out. Um, and that's sort of accepted. Um, I'm pretty sure if you went through just about any book, um, traditionally published book, you might find a typo in there. It happens in a course of tens of thousands of words, right? But if uh, the audition I had, I did had lots of typos in it, which should have been a huge red flag um, as to as to the quality of the of the material but i i did the book anyway I, well i i accepted the project anyway when i auditioned and i was in the first chapter and there was already what i found to be objectionable material coming from a protagonist um protagonist using derogatory language and to me that's not a protagonist and um there are ways to make that work but it usually comes out of a level of self-awareness. If you think of characters like Archie Bunker, well, who had no self-awareness, but it was comedy. Um, and if you look, uh, House comes to mind um, and Hugh Laurie's character. Um, there was a self-awareness there. And so it can be done. But anyway, um, when I saw that, between that, the typos, I knew I didn't want to do the book anymore. We were in the first chapter, so I just... I messaged the author, the rights holder, and I said I wanted to dissolve the contract. And I explained why. And, um, yeah, so we dissolved the contract and I didn't do the book. Um, other times I've been much further into the book when I've discovered it. And I finished the project. Because sometimes you just got to do it. I looked at it like I was... X hours into my narration 
and I had to make a decision for myself how objectionable was it and there yeah there was just like some internal math that I needed to do as far as whether it was worth doing and the answer most of the times has been yes because it's been like minor little it's been individual scenes or individual snippets within scenes um and I looked at it like I'm already a quarter of the way in halfway in I've got time invested into this um and sometimes it's a matter I, honestly it's a matter of a paycheck it was objectionable to me um I do have hard lines that I will not cross um there are, there are definitive lines for, and it's usually, and, but that's you, again, it comes down to what the entire work is about. Um, I find that I have to uh, detach myself, uh, the person from the professional, um, because I also find I'm not in a position right now that I can just turn down projects. You know, I got bills to pay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I do. I, and I, I, I wish I were in a position where I could be even more selective, but I'm not. And at a certain point, just the reality sets in of, I got to I gotta pay the bills. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a tougher, it's a, it's a good question, uh, but it's, it's a tough question. Because I, I think you have to look at it like, what is the, what is the objectionable material and what is the impact of that going to be? Um because if it's objectionable and it espouses an objectionable point of view in a positive way and that's the theme of the book then that's when I would absolutely walk away from if I got even halfway in and it turns out that oh this is a version of Mein Kampf um, then yeah I'm out I will cancel that because that's I, I will back out of that project um, But yeah, for individual, I had one where there was, um, so one of my very hard lines and anyone who's, who knows me, anyone who's sat through any of my webinars, um, knows that a very hard line for me is animal abuse. A hard line for me in, 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 um, in real life for one. And it's a hard, it's a hard line for me in, in, in books. And I'll say very specifically, I don't want to have to read the description of what's happening. Um, implied animal abuse, animal abuse is not okay. I'm very clear on that, but implied when the bad guy does it, I get it. You know, that's sort of a thing you do. You have, you want to make a bad guy super bad. You have him kick a puppy, right? Um, metaphorically. Um, but there was one where there was, uh, not overly, but graphic enough scene of, of, um, animal abuse in a book I narrated and that disturbed me. And I actually wrote my, uh, the, the producer of that book and said something because that to me is like that's that there needs to be a warning somewhere that because that, that, that would disturb people because it came out of nowhere that was the other thing um yeah so is it okay to cancel a project or are you on the hook uh, i mean it depends on the terms of your own of the contract of what you signed up for um if you are really having a difficult time doing it um then yeah i i would say go ahead and Talk to whoever you're, you have to deal with and, and cancel the project. When you do that, though, you have to understand what the terms of whatever contract you agreed to are. You might have to walk away without being paid. That just might be the case. Um, yeah, and you have to be prepared for that. Um, sometimes um, when you're working on a project, you might actually be able to stretch it out that um, depending on how far you get into the book, you get paid a certain amount. The problem with that, I find, is unless you're setting up payment terms, um, unless you've done it to set up payment terms that say, well, when I get to the 25% mark, you pay me 25% when I get to 50%. Um, I find that's better for when you have a brand new person that you're working with. And this is when you're working one-to-one. -one. You, the narrator, the voice actor, are working with um, the, uh, working with directly with the author. And if it's someone who's brand new, then yeah, maybe you, you say, because we're first time working together and it's a way to keep both of us safe, 25%. When I get to 25% of the book, you pay the first 25% of the per finished hour rate. And then 
halfway or, or whatever milestones you want to put in there. And that way, if you already have that and there's something objectionable that you just can't get past, you can get paid for whatever milestone you're at because you agreed to that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to enter the relationship saying, and if I find any objectionable material, you owe me this because it kind of sounds like you're setting up for a way to walk out. Um, I just, I look at it like, I mean, yeah, if I got halfway through and it just got to a point where I wasn't able to do it anymore, I would probably want to be paid something for my time. And I would probably frame it like, well, you didn't tell me that this was in here and that's something I need to know up front. And this is a hard line that I don't cross. You should have been up front about the material in your book. Um, but again, you have to be prepared to walk away and get paid nothing. And I think that's just, to me, that's how that's set up. But yeah, you should not be forced to go through a project that would traumatize you. Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, I think the big question is how much can you really stomach? Um, I've had books where there's been individual lines that are like, oh, uh, this person is saying some things that are leaning towards misogyny. Um, things like, oh, you know how women are, you know, something like that. That's not me saying that. I want to make clear that's not me saying that. That's actually lines that I've had to read, things like that. Something like that. Do I walk away from a project because of that individual line? No. It's not my words. I just have to say them. Um, again, I wish I were in a position where I could just flat out say, nope, not doing it, but that's just not the way it's set up right now. But um, I hope that helps. Uh, yeah. The majority of books I've had to narrate have not been an issue. I've had to narrate. The majority of books I have narrated have not been... Um, have not been objectionable. Um, so I've been fortunate that I've been spared that. Um, there's only two projects that I've actually canceled. One was the aforementioned one because of a combination of all of the typos and the language that was used right in the beginning, because that just sort of told me what this project was going to be like. And I didn't want to spend the next 10, 20 hours narrating this. The other time was, um, the person who hired me, it was a memoir and it was very disorganized, a lot of typos, a lot of sentence fragments. It wasn't ready for prime time. And I approached that author and I said, listen, you, this is your first draft. It's not ready and I can't take your money. I didn't feel right taking the guy's money. Um, because it wasn't ready. And I, and honestly, I didn't want to spend the next, again, 10 to 20 hours narrating this thing and having to deal, because re reading a book with typos is really hard. It's not pleasant. So, um, I, I hope that helps. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's sort of just the nature of the beast. Fortunately, like I said, most of the time, I don't think it's really been an issue. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, if you could take a moment, subscribe down below so you could support the channel. If you have any questions, you can absolutely reach out to me via social media at the St. Brian on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you need to book me for voiceover projects, you can get me at voxbrian.com. And if you ever want to work with me for private coaching, for voiceover, to get ready for a demo, for audition help, you can reach out to Edge Studio and they can uh, book my time for uh, coaching purposes. So thank you so much and thank you for the support uh, for the channel.